today with Clive Smith, who is a film and animation director. You wouldn't have heard of anything that he's done. Nothing, Nothing. whatsoever. No. Hi, Catherine. <laughs> nice to be here. We are going to, as usual, jump right into the questions. So, Jumping away. Jumping away. So the first question is, what made you drop into your spirituality, if any? Well, I'm probably the least spiritual person you've had sitting on this couch, to tell you the truth. Um, I think it, for me, I think it happened a completely the opposite way. I started off when I was very young, being far more spiritual than I am now. And I'll tell you a story. When we moved from North London, from our tiny cardboard box to West London, um, to a slightly larger cardboard box, well, actually, it was a much larger cardboard box, a really nice two-story cardboard box. I met a whole bunch of friends, which I hadn't had before, because the small cardboard box couldn't fit, them. couldn't fit any friends. So there were kids on the street who introduced me to the Boy Scouts. So I joined the Boy Scouts. And the Boy Scouts, within the Boy Scouts, there was the choir boys, because it was all associated with the church, right? right? Christianity, God, and all that stuff. So I joined the Boy Scouts and I joined the choir. The thing about the choir was you got paid. You oh. got paid like a shilling a week or something. And then for weddings, I think it was two and sixpence. And for funerals, it was three and six. Ooh. So it was quite lucrative. I mean, for an 11 year old, I mean, that kept me in fags for at least a few days. Cigarettes, that is, I should say. Um, anyway, um, I got very involved in the church and I was like 11, 12 years old. I was fascinated. I was fascinated by the rituals of the whole procedures and the church itself. I mean, churches are fantastic, aren't they? You Beautiful. know, they are so heavy and they're so evocative and the smells of the incense and the, the church that, that I went to, there was the, the Stations of the Cross in like 3D all around the church, which, again, totally fascinating. I became a server, which is helping the vicar do the bread and the wine, the bread and the blood, blood of Christ and flesh of Christ. Um, and, you know, I light the candles and put the candles out and swung the incense and all, all that stuff. I, w I just got, for a short period of time, I got very involved in it because I was just so fascinated and I was just so taken up with it. I mean, after the war in England, there was no social, there was no social life very much. And this, I think, was one of the things that attracted me. It was something to, to learn something to focus on. And it was one sunny Sunday morning. It may not have been sunny. I may have made that up. It could have been raining. But it was a Sunday morning for sure. And we'd gone through the ritual of giving the wafers and the wine and seeing these old, old, old people. They were mostly old, old, old people kneeling, taking this stuff. I, it just occurred to me, I thought, wait a minute. There's something wrong. There's something wrong with this shop. Picture. 
um, followed the priest into the, to the vestry. The choir goes into one big vestry, and then the priest and I go into the other vestry. It's okay. We won't go there, but no, no he, was, he was pretty cool. But anyway, we go into the vestry, and he's knocking back the rest of the wine. Oh boy. So it's no longer, you know, the blood of Christ. It's now just cheap happy red hour. Wine. It's happy hour. And somehow the whole thing fell to pieces for me. And almost overnight, I became an atheist. And I said, this is wrong. This is completely wrong. And I had, I, I had a, a strength. I felt a new strength, you know. And if that's sort of like a spiritual enlightenment, then I think it that is. was it. Yeah, I think it because is. I suddenly realized that I don't need that. And nobody should need it either. The strength is in here. You know, it's not up there. And, you know, the next day I, I went and visited the, uh, the vicar. And I told him that uh, no more. And that was it for bars me. Bars closed. Yeah, bars closed. I'm sorry. It's 10.30. Out. <laughs> there was a brawl that ensued. <laughs> yeah. Poor no, guy. he asked me all sorts of questions. He said, well, take your time. Take your time. You can, you can think about it. Yes, I thought about it. Thank you. Yes, I know, I know. You're young. <laughs> anyway. The, that, the end. My enlightenment. Your yeah. enlightenment. Yeah. That, it's better to learn it then, right? Then, yes, yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I have a cousin too who, <laughs> who lives in Australia now. He, his father, my uncle, was a sergeant in the army, and so naturally he went yeah. into the army because he had no choice. His father was brutal, he was brutal to me, let alone his kids. It was terrible. And we, I used to go and stay with him holidays and things like that, and I was terrified, terrified. He couldn't even talk at the table, what, couldn't he'd do be, anything. He beat you? Or oh, well, he didn't touch me. He drew the line. But, yes, <clears throat> but I knew what he did to my cousins. Anyway, David went into the army, and he fought, and bought it eventually, or very quickly, bought himself out, because that's the only way you could get out of the army if you got out early. Um, bought himself out, went to Australia, and found God for about probably five or six years. Became a priest, like went through the whole thing, and then did exactly the same as I did. He said, "Wait a minute! Wait a minute! That's my one. Wait a minute! There's something wrong with this picture." He is so anti-religious now. He is so anti-religious. I love him. <laughs> we have great conversations together. Feel on like a house on fire. He sh we were in we were in Glasgow um, about six months ago together visiting other members of our family, and there was a guy in the middle of the street or the area um, preaching. As you do. As one, as they do. And David has a, had this t-shirt. And it said, religion. Between us, we can find a cure. <laughs> and I made, them, I made him go and stand next to this guy. And we took a photograph. It's the funniest. I'll send it to you. <laughs> what, was the, what was the look on the guy's face? Well, he didn't know. Oh, he didn't he's just facing the camera. <laughs> He, he thinks he's got a fan. <laughs> I said, David, go and stand next and I'll get your picture. The guy was very, very proud, you know. You were mean. I know, <laughs> so mean. I'm so mean. Well, we'll post it later. <laughs> I hope he's not up there listening. That's oh. all I can say. He's definitely listening. <laughs> <laughs> but there's nothing you can do about it. That's true. So, who do you go to for advice or guidance or obviously not <laughs> there. don't go up there don't go, up there. I go down now <laughs> hello now he's cool <laughs> no 
I, I go to the people that I believe in. I, I go to people that I like, people I love, people I respect. Um, Monty Python, Peter Cook, Dr. Seuss. <laughs> I'm serious. These are the people who give me the kind of um, textures in my life that, that, that make me who I am. You know. Um, so if you go Melanie through, Melanie is yeah. is absolutely amazing. You know? She laughs a lot. She has an incredible outlook on life. And she's amazing to me. Melanie is Clive's queen. <clears throat> Melanie, as I'm sure you figured. Melly Fresh. Melly Fresh. So if you say you had a, a really tricky predicament that you were in, you would go to Mel or one of your friends and just get advice there or oh, no. no. No, I <clears throat> don't really. No. I don't think so. I I actually I do have a friend in Vancouver. Um, Perry, Kendall, who is, um, he's a very good friend. We don't see a lot of each other because he's there and I'm here. But we discovered in our early 20s, I guess it was, early 20s, we discovered that we actually had grown up together, that we were in the same school together, but we didn't remember each other. So we were in a school together in England, and then... And that part we didn't remember. But when I was at art school in England, he was at medical school. He's a doctor. He was at medical school. So we used to go to the same parties. We used to do the same things together. And have fun together, you know. And then he disappeared. He went off to Jamaica to um, practice medicine. And I came to Canada to practice Whatever it is, I practiced um, medicine. What medicine? Sort <laughs> different kind of medicine. Different kind of medicine. Um, and then he, and after a few years, he got fed up with Jamaica. He called me and um, came to Toronto. And I had a big house at the time that I was renting, so I threw him in the back room, and he stayed for a long time. But he's remained a very close friend. Very close. And so I've actually gone to him. I think I went to him when I was incredibly depressed. I don't know. It was a while ago. It was a while ago. It was probably during the last few years of Nirvana that was kind of one of the toughest times for me, I think. Um, and I just, I just was so, you know, underneath it all. It was awful. And I remember talking to him about it. I know what he did. If I'd talked to Melanie about it, she'd just slap me and say, come on, get out of it. Pull yourself together. Fuck off. That's, you know. That has its place too. No, absolutely. It's what I need. You know, it's what you need when you're in a, in a space like that. You need a, one of those. So he did something, but you can't remember what it was, but it was profound, whatever. Well, it was, it was just, just to talk, just somebody to talk to, really. Right. That's all it is. You unload, right? Yeah. You unload on somebody, and I think just the unloading is the cure, or is part of the cure. You don't, you're not really looking for an answer. You're not looking yeah. for the magic sentence no, that's just going to change your life. You just... Drop the baggage, and then... Yeah. 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 Okay, so what do you do on a daily basis in terms of what's, what's the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning? Um, I think I open my eyes and try and figure out <laughs> where, where you are. I am. Um, you know, it takes me about 15 minutes just to get all the bits moving. Do you do you the know, cat, all the parts like... working? <laughs> yeah. To so make stretching. sure that everything's there. You know? <laughs> check it all out. Um, I go to the gym in the morning. That's one of the things I do because I essentially work out of our house, right. as Melanie does. 
I like to get out of the house early in the morning, go to the gym, do all that stuff. And then come back and I get back to the house. <laughs> Is that what you look like at yeah. the gym? <laughs> like that. Yeah. That's how you do it. <sighs> and pick up things, you know. <sighs> Very heavy things. Pick up other people. Um, and get back. And then, and then I feel like I've done something already. And I've sort of cleaned out my head a little bit. And I've seen the world. I've been down the road and around the corner and then back to the house. And then you sketch it all afterwards. And then I start my day. Yeah. And is there any sort of, so that's your ritual, that's your morning ritual? Well, that's my morning ritual, yes. And do There's you do it? a lot of other little things inside there, blah, 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 blah. but that's the basic one, yes. And that you would do wherever you are, as long as you have access to a gym. Um, in England, I do have a gym too, so yeah, because I spend a lot of time in London, as you know. As I know. Um, so yes, I do it in London as well. Okay. Yeah, it's a good ritual. It's a good it's, I Normally I work out in the evening, and today uh, I did it for the, one of the first times in the morning. Oh, cool. And it's amazing how it sets a different... Oh, totally. Oh, yeah, you've got to keep that up. Yeah. I couldn't do it at the end of the day. That's, end of the day is the end of the day. <laughs> the end of the day where you chill and you kind of mull over things, you know, but go and sweat it out at the end of the day. No, no. it was yeah. just the schedule. I'd, after nine, I'd have time, so. Right, <clears throat> I understand. But I think the morning thing is actually the way to go. Because mm. it gets you set. Totally. You're pumped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and sometimes I have to force myself to go. Sometimes I really don't feel like it, you know. If I've had a late night and I'm half asleep, but doing a, a routine and um, working it all out and showering and somewhere else is great. It's fantastic. I'll do it now every single day. Okay. Now that you've said it. All right. <laughs> Do you meditate? And if so, how? No. No. Meditate. Meditate. I've tried. I've, I've no idea <laughs> how you can, how you do, I mean, you know, what do you do? Like, think of nothing. Well, how can you think of nothing? Because you stop and think of nothing, and all I can think about is thinking of nothing, or thinking about thinking about thinking of nothing. Because there's nothing there, and you go, oh, nothing. There's nothing there. Oh, stop thinking about nothing. No, I won't. No, okay, I'll stop. Okay, I'm not thinking about anything. I'm not going to think about... No. I can't do that. I'll tell you how I meditate. I meditate when I'm doing the washing up, um, when I'm vacuuming the floor, when I'm uh, flying, fly airplanes. You know that. I know that. You know that. <laughs> um, that's my zen, that's actually. It. That is my zen. Except for when you can't find the guy who said he's around the corner and <laughs> you're up in the air. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just sort of snap out of it for a moment. That's when you do the gym dance. Right. Right. Um, no, I, uh, I think, you know, I think a lot. And I think way too much. Um, I... Meditate when I do things, when I'm active. I can't meditate sitting on the floor looking at a green wall or anything like that. I mean, I don't know, but I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to meditate. You don't know how. That's I mean, good. so many people say to me, you must do this. You must meditate. It will change your life. I don't know. They give you a manual that makes sense, and then maybe you will, right? Yeah. Is there a manual? There are tons of manuals. Oh yeah, yeah. I <laughs> no, I I wouldn't believe them. No, I, I can't. I I did TM once, and then I was able. I was up till four in the morning. I had so much energy. Good lord. I know, so I, but that never happened again. So what I do now is I just try to spend five minutes, five ten minutes, sitting in front of my little shrine, mm -hmm. and then I just close my eyes and put my hands together and thank everybody or everything in mm -hmm. the whole universe. Mm -hmm. And then 
make a prayer for the day and an intention and then that's it. So that's not really... Because like, Satan, like you, if I try to think of nothing, I think of everything. Mm. And then I get frustrated that I was thinking of something. And that's, that's right. Like, Absolutely. So you make it work for you, right? Yeah. And you're able to live... Like I say, that meditation really helps with being present in the moment, living in the moment. But you don't have any problems living in the moment, do you? Not at all. <laughs> not at all. Um, no, I don't think so. I mean, I do live in the past and the future as well as the present. Right. All at the same time. Really. Which is the most fun. I daydream a lot. Yeah, daydreaming's amazing. Absolutely. I don't see any problem with that. Because also they say if you can, you know, give gratitude for something that you might not have yet. So I'm grateful for my wonderful partner and this wonderful, whatever it is, give mm. gratitude for it ahead of time. And that's daydreaming, really. Mm. Isn't it? Sure. Wishful thing. <laughs> Thank you for my Lamborghini. <laughs> I love it. It works. Yeah. I'll try it as well. There's, is there a rule that you have in life? Rule number one, you have to have fun. Mm. Rule number two, there is no rule number two. Um, actually, there are no rules. No. The fun's no. a pretty good one. Which one? The fun zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That works. That works. Yep, yep, yep. If you can. <laughs> I mean, it's sort of tough, really. What? Um, well, you can't always have fun. You know, I have a shirt that says no fun. <laughs> <laughs> so that just shows you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, no, I, I mean... Life changes, things change all the time. So, rules, sure, you can have a few rules, but just be prepared to toss them out the window. And when in doubt, have fun. And when in doubt, have fun, absolutely. Mm -hmm. What do you do to have fun? What are some of the things that you think of one thing that you do to have fun? Sex, <laughs> um, flying airplanes, riding motorcycles, drawing playing piano, um, talking to you. <laughs> Those are all, sex is, uh, it's great that sex made it to the top of the list. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's a great one. That's so fucking lonely. <laughs> See, sex is, yeah, we need, everyone needs to be having, well, yeah, yeah lots, of, <laughs> lots of sex and lots of flying. Sure. Preferably not at the same time. If you're the pilot, I meant. <laughs> oh, it's okay. We won't. That's all right. we'll no, we digress. <laughs> we digress. Sorry about that. As Sorry. you are. As you are. So when you when you paint, is there? Do you just go for it, or do you have something that you start and you sketch out and go from there? Or do you well, it depends what I'm doing. Right. Sometimes I have a very specific thing that I need to do that I need to design, and so. I'll just write. I think I start off being very um, just loose and, and sort of automatic, you know, until things start to come to me, you know, and start to sort of speak to me. Say, I'm the one. Did do you hear something? No. That's the joke. <laughs> They do. I was going to say. If they're animated, yeah. <laughs> they can talk. Talk way too much, actually. <laughs> um, no, I love drawing. That's something that I, that I, you know, I've always done since I was that big. Well, they didn't have pencils to fit me when I was that big, but you know what I mean. You got along. Yes. Yes. And you have, so, <clears throat> if the drawings don't talk to you, is there anything else that talks to you that maybe we can't see or only you can see? Or... Oh God, the world is noisy. Noisy. It doesn't shut up. <laughs> I walk into a room and the furniture is like screaming at me and the cupboards are making way too much noise. What, what do they sound like? It's sort of abstract. It's, um, I think, I think it's me. 
I think what they're doing is they're mimicking me because I have there's I have another client inside me that continually causes trouble. No, continually um, criticizes me. Everything I do, the other Clive says, sure you want to do that? I don't think that's right. That's really stupid what you just did. No, don't go over there. It's like... But it's constant? It's fairly constant. I talk to myself a lot. Inside here, I talk to... That's the other fly that I talk to. You ever, do you ever do it out loud? I think so. <laughs> because Melody says, what? No, oh, nothing. Stop interrupting. Yeah. <coughs> so there's, so there's, the, there's the critical Clive, and then there's the furniture, and then say would, have, would do animals and trees, and everything talks? Um... Yeah. yeah. They have voices. I mean, they're not, you know, I'm not claiming to be kind of crazy here. No, I'm no. not actually hearing voices, but I'm aware of the presence of inanimate objects. And somehow I think I impose myself on everything around me. Don't we all do that? But I never, <clears throat> I feel energy, but I. Say my sister can see, she'd look at someone and she sees color around their aura. I I've don't see that. that before. Yeah, I don't I've see any of that, that stuff. I mean, I feel, I feel energy in a good or bad or whatever way, but yeah. I, don't, I don't get to hear anything really. Maybe I'm just not like, did you, were you always able no, to hear it? I'm not, I'm, I'm not. I think, I think I'm mis, misrepresenting this idea. It's not, I don't think it's, it's an abstract thought of sound. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Sort of. It's not real noise. It's not real. It's not. Ah! Although I think that's happened at times. But generally speaking, it's just a sensation okay. more than anything else. But it's throughout your whole body. Yeah. 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 You're making me tear up on one. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let me cry. It's just one I'm eye. So sorry. It's just the one I eye. Have something, I have something for you to make you laugh. This is for you. I brought this for you. It's an absolutely beautiful, beautiful device that you'll find. I think you'll find very useful. Are we seeing this on camera? I hope so. <laughs> Where did it go? Oh, it's under the screen now. You might find it good for meditating. <laughs> You, oh. you just wind it up, as you can see. It needs to. Doesn't that say so much about, about our lives and about where we go with things and it does. what we need to do? So there you are. Oh, That's thank for you. you. This is great. Oh, it just started again. Oh, does it? You just have to touch it and then it starts again. Well, or, or just had a little juice hold, left. You have to see this thing whips around and that's what, what gives it the uh, blah, 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 right see because it's not balanced anyway there you are this is Clive at, at the gym yes 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 I'd like to make a huge one of those actually <laughs> very good very good it's even stayed on the table you're getting good at it I know thank you you're very welcome so I was going to say what makes you happiest. Now I know what makes me happiest. <laughs> what makes me happy? Well, <clears throat> I think happiness is overrated, to tell you the <laughs> truth. I really do. I don't know about happiness. I think, I think what, what we are really after is some sense of achievement, some sense of satisfaction. Um, it's all momentary, you know? Um, Happiness is a frontal lobotomy, or a bottle in front of me, actually. Um, what makes me happy? 
when I'm not when I'm not panicked and I'm not thinking of how dreadful the world is these days and what's going on out there. When I can sort of put that aside, when I can just focus on a few nice things around me. If I'm playing piano and for some strange reason it sounds okay, that makes me happy. The flat sharp ninth sharp 11 sharp 13 that makes me very happy um i don't know um knowing that it's not going to snow today that's a that good one <laughs> that's a very good one but you came prepared in case yes <laughs> you look like me two days ago all black oh yeah <laughs> yeah riding boots very well, you're all white, and I'm all black. You can be the angel. Okay. <laughs> the angel of darkness. You could be the angel of light. <laughs> I'll give you a feather. Is there... What important advice would you give to... Like, say for your, your life, there'd be a lot of people that would look, look at your life and just say, Oh my God, that would just be the most fun, the most incredible, amazing life. How do I get a life like that? How, how do I do, you know, uh, he must be really in, in touch with what he's meant to be doing. Do you think so? Yeah. Oh my God, many, many, many people knew <laughs> the truth. Um, what advice would I give somebody? I would say... Well, when I was in the Boy Scouts, the motto was be prepared. <laughs> but nobody could be prepared for this life, can they really? No. I mean, there's always something lurking around the corner. I know. But, you know, be open, be kind to yourself, be kind to other people, be kind to the environment. Try and focus on a few things, but don't necessarily focus on them because because life is is a contradiction. You know, um, you could say that you know you need to be focused and you need to not, not be distracted and know where you're going and have a goal and all that stuff. Okay, but the contradiction of that is, of course, be open to changing course yeah. when it's necessary um, I don't know I don't have any advice for people have fun rule number one I think rule I think that's the best rule because that that sort of if you're having fun it means that you're listening to what you need right if you're listening to what you need then you sort of you'll be on the path of where you're supposed to go just say yes makes sense to me. <laughs> absolutely that's the answer. Uh, who? So you said that you don't have a spiritual practice anymore. But when you think of something that makes you, uh, like say when you feel magic, when there's magic that occurs in your life. Mm. Well, I was going to say, but I guess it's everybody who, who has that impact on you. And it could be anybody. It's not like there's one person who's the most, ma well, Mel no. would be the most magical, but. Yeah, I don't have somebody. Like that, no. that I kind of worship or yeah, look up to. I mean, I... magic happens when it happens at the least expected times. You know, I just find that life is full of surprises, and you know, it's also a minefield, isn't it? I mean. It's, I, life is pretty good, actually. Life is pretty good. It's We're pretty, pretty lucky. It, we are very lucky. Yeah. We're lucky to be sitting here, talking to each other, Not having worried. fun, in life. In life. Here we are, in your life. Who knows what's waiting for us? Who knows what's outside life? I know. It's kind of weird, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. You, you can get lost in that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thinking of the universe and how tiny we are. And 
Yeah. So mind boggling. It is mind boggling. My mind is boggled. <laughs> I have a boggled mind. You're gonna have to do something about that. I'm boggling. <laughs> right. <laughs> do you have any advice? Requests. <laughs> The Lamborghini. Okay. Do I have any advice for people? Um, for starters, for someone who, say, wanted to go into animation or into anything in life that they want to go into, what advice would you give them? Because there's, you know, there's, like we said, there might be someone who's watching who was told they couldn't do what they wanted to do or their parents didn't support what they well, wanted to do. I, I, I do think that if you want something badly enough, it will happen. I do believe that, but I know it's sort of easy for me to say. But I think that if you are, if you, if you want to do something and if you, you know, f focus on it and persevere, it, that may, the thing that you think you want may not happen, but something else will, you know. You can always go down a path that you think you that you think you want to stay on, um, and and you know don't give up, but persevere and allow other things to come in. I think that's probably a little piece of advice: is allow doors to open. You know, don't don't shut doors just because you think that you don't want to go over there. Be open to, to other people's ideas, be, be open to yourself changing your mind. I mean, it's, that's important too. Be flexible. Be flexible, be open. Remember <clears throat> the world is crazy. It's even crazier than we are. And we're pretty, pretty crazy. crazy. So be flexible, be open, have fun. And tap your feet. And tap my feet. Is there anything else you want to share with us? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> I'm not sharing anything today. No more. Thank you, Clive. Thank you, everyone, for listening in. And have a beautiful weekend. And have fun. Bye. Bye. <laughs>